So now that we've refreshed poly painting, let's talk about poly grouping with poly paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank my RGB intensity back up to 100, go to color, fill object. And again, I just have my standard brush with RGB turned on, Z add turned off. You can sculpt and paint at the same time, but we're just going to be painting. If we go down here to the poly groups menu, you're going to see there is a poly group from poly paint. So let's open up the subtool menu again. We have colorize turned on. We have our object filled with white on all of our vertices. We're going to switch to a black color. And now if I just start painting on here, you can now go to polygroups, do polygroup from poly paint, and then come back up here, turn off colorize, go back to a white color, turn on polyframe here, and you're going to see it transferred that vertex color info to a polygroup. So you can hold down control shift and you can select it. And there's any number of things you can do with these polygroups now. Now you're going to see the end result isn't that smooth. If you want to, you can isolate these polygroups here. You can go into your deformation menu and you can tell it to like say polish by features to clean those edges up. Or you can even go in here to your masking menu and you can say mask by border, control tap to invert that to protect the insides. And then go back up here and do a polish by features or just a polish to go ahead and smooth those lines out. An alternative to using poly groups would be masking. So you can go through here and you can just mask, hold down control and just mask an area. And then you can hit control W, which if you remember from earlier videos is under the masking menu, I'm sorry, under the polygroups menu, group mask, clear mask is a hotkey for that. And if you have nothing mask, you hit control W to just polygroup that entire object. So let's control Z out of that. And one more option I want to show you is if you hold down control and you mask this area and then you go under geometry, there's an edge loop masked border here, and that'll go ahead and cut a line around that masked border so you get a little bit of a smoother result. Now another option you can do to get a smoother result without having to resort to deformations or slicing, what you can do is, let's go ahead and undo all these. So we're back where we started here. Let's hit um, Control W, make this all one polygroup. And now we're going to be, again, poly painting with our standard brush on our object. We'll choose a black color here. So now we can see our poly paint, and we can go ahead and turn off polyframe for now. And like I mentioned in the previous section, it's poly paint is going to be affected by your vertex density. So it's painting information on these vertices here. So you're going to see, uh, I can't paint in between. I can't paint on edges, but I can paint on vertices. So you can see we can paint along these vertices here when it's really not dense. So really you want a lot of density in order to get nice sharp lines so you get a nice clean result. If you want to, you can go ahead and go up here to geometry and just subdivide and that'll get you more uh, vertices in these areas. You can also go over here to your Dynamesh settings and hit Dynamesh and that'll give you uniform vertices here. And if you remember the Tessimate video from earlier, you can also use Tessimation to go ahead and you can drag this polygon size down and that'll get you more density as well. However, you can control that density on the fly. If you remember back from the Sculptures Pro videos we did, if you turn this on with the standard brush here, as I drag out on my mesh, we're going to go ahead and automatically tessellate this area. So if we turn off polyframe here, you're going to see even in this lower area, we're able to get high res results because we're automatically tessellating where we need it based on our brush size. And again, if you remember from that video, we're controlling that globally through the stroke menu with adaptive size turned on. Our draw size will dictate how much resolution we're getting. Now up here where it was not dense at all, you can see even with Sculptures Pro Mode on, it does need a vertice to kind of start with, and it sends out this tessellation to the next nearest vertice, and that does cause a little bit of gradation in here. When we go to polygroup it from polypaint, it's going to not take into consideration anything that's gray. It's just looking at the pure black values on your mesh. So it's not a huge deal, but if you want to control that a little bit more, again, you can hold down Shift to smooth. We'll turn off RGB for our smooth brush. We'll have Z add on. We'll go ahead and crank that intensity down to zero. And now you can hold down shift and you can smooth these areas out. And it's not really affecting your forms. It's just adding tessellation in very specific areas. So now when we go back to our standard brush and we start painting, we'll get a much more predictable result. If you want to, as long as you don't change it to a drag rect or a drag dot stroke, your alpha should work. So if you want to tighten up that stroke a little bit more, you can add an alpha. Again, make your brush size smaller to add even more resolution. And you can also turn your focal shift down. And that should get you a nice crisp edge. So now that we got our brush all set up, and you can use any brush for this, we're just using the standard brush for now. You can go through here and you can just poly paint where you want to put your polygroup borders. So I'm going to turn on L. 
or tap L to turn on my lazy mouse, which is in the stroke menu under lazy mouse here. You can just tap L to turn that on and off. And we can just use this. Let's go ahead and crank that lazy radius up a little bit. And make sure RGB is turned up to 100 and you've got black selected. And you can just start painting in where you want your polygroup lines to go. Now you can go over here to your masking menu and you can try doing maybe a mask by cavity to go ahead and mask out the cavity areas or do and then invert that and you can fill this with a black color. You can also try maybe mask by peaks and valleys, mask by AO. So depending on the topology of your mesh, you might be able to use that to kind of narrow down your masking and then do a color fill object. Or you can just continue like what we're doing. Speaking of masking, if you hold on control, you can go in here with your mask pin and you can grab any sort of alpha. So you can control and drag out a star here. However, it's going to be dependent on your topology. So you will have to add topology in these areas if you want a nice looking star or a nice looking alpha to be dragged on. So if we do that, we hold down shift with our RGB turned off, our Z had turned down to zero. We can go ahead and add tessellation in this area. And then when we hold down control and drag out, we can mask through a nice uh, star on the side. Now we are uh, masking through the object, so it's projecting through the other side here when you have X turned on. So I'm going to go to the very side here, and we'll just project straight through. And then you can control tap to invert, and then do a color fill object, and get a black mask in here. Of course, you're going to want to watch the middle here. If you want to paint over this, you can just tap C to select the white color, and then go ahead and get rid of that information. Another option I like to do is transpose smart mask. We're going to go to B, T, S, selects transpose smart mask, and by default nothing will be in this alpha. You can go ahead and bring in, you can import your own alphas if you hit the comma key. If you have any alphas stored in these, uh, in this area here, you can grab them from there. Or you can go to alpha import, bring in your own alphas. We'll just go ahead and grab this arrow for now. And now with transpose smart mask, what I can do is I can hold down control and drag, and then I can lift up with the space bar and I can rotate. And we can very precisely place this alpha here. Control tap to invert, and then again, color, fill object. Oop, go ahead and select black, color, fill object. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is when we go into BTS for transpose smart mask, you need to make sure you hit the Y key to go out of gizmo mode right here and toggle over to transpose mode. If you're new to the transpose line or you're new to the gizmo line, again, go to my YouTube channel. ZBrush4R8 has all the new stuff on the gizmo, and then my intro to ZBrush part one class on my playlist here, we'll go over the transpose line in a little bit more detail. And let's go ahead and color, clean this up a little bit. We'll hit C. And we'll go ahead and paint that out. And if you do want to maybe put a circle in here, what you can do is you can hold down Control, Shift, hold down Alt, and we'll get rid of the back here so we don't project all the way through. We're now we're going to hold down Control, go to Mask Circle. If you want to make it a perfect circle, go into Stroke, turn on Square and Center, drag that out. And now we have a perfect circle we can put right in the middle here. Control tap to invert that. And you're going to see it doesn't go through my mask because it's not there. I'm going to go to color, oh, choose black, color, fill object. And you know what? Let's do one more. We're going to go ahead and mask this area here, but this time we're going to mask the here, hold down control to tap, and now we're going to choose a white color and then we'll go to color, fill object. And that'll go ahead and fill that with white. Now it is, again, dependent on the resolution of that mesh. So what you might want to do is bring back your geometry so we can use Sculptor's Pro Mode. Go in here and tessellate this geometry with your smooth brush with zero intensity. And now you'll get a much better result. And again, the reason why I hid the back of this object is so I don't have to worry about the masking on this side. So we can hold down again, Control Shift and then Alt to get rid of this back. And now this time, let's go ahead and drag out a mask here. And then we'll hold down Control and drag out another mask using the space bar to move it into place and then hold down Alt. And that'll just leave me a little ring for this mask here. Control tap to invert that. Choose a black color. Go to color, fill object. Hold down control shift to bring everything back. And now we have a bunch of polypane information that we can now turn into polygroup information.